Hey guys, Zach here, coming at you with another video. So, something I realized, um, I wanted to do a video about the GameCube, because I knew that we're coming up on the 18th birthday of the GameCube. But I realized that I mixed up the Japanese release date and the, uh, American release date. Uh, so I'm releasing this on the birthday of the GameCube in Japan, because today's November 18th, and in Japan, the GameCube turned... 18 years old, they can finally smoke and drink in European countries. Actually, basically any other country besides America. America. So yes, you guys, as you guys know, I love the GameCube. It is the console that I grew up on. Well, actually, I, I more so grew up on the original Xbox, actually, but I just have more fond memories with the GameCube. A lot of the games I played when I was younger, I remember playing them on Xbox, but a lot of my happiest gaming memories were on the GameCube. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my experiences with the GameCube. I'm going to go a little bit more in detail in some of my GameCube collection. I have done a GameCube, a full GameCube collection video if you want to watch that. But I'm going to go more in depth as to specific items I have and certain things like that. So yeah, let's get into today's video. Zach Pack, he's always there for you. So I guess the most logical place to start is my boxed Nintendo GameCube. I got this from Too Many Games. I think I got this back in 2016. And um, it's complete in the box. Um, I don't know how much I want to open it up and get it out because, you know, it's going to be hell to put back in. But it's in there. We got the cardboard inserts. I'm going to flip it around to show you. Got the cardboard inserts. I'm pretty certain there's like an instruction manual or something in there somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is my Indigo GameCube. Um, it's the color, actually, I, I personally grew up on the black Nintendo GameCube. That's the one I had when I was a kid. Um, in fact, I think that's the one that I have hooked up to my TV, is the GameCube I had when I was a kid. But for some reason, I've always wanted a purple one, because when I was younger, before I got my first GameCube, I played my old stepbrother's GameCube. And, um, you know, I played Mario Party 6 with him on it. I'm going to talk about Mario Party 6 in a little bit, but he had, I'm pretty certain an Indigo GameCube, and I just have that vivid memory of that GameCube, and, you know, I just love it. I love the GameCube system. I love the cute handle that the GameCube has, um, and, yeah, so, that's my GameCube complete in box. Um, I remember I picked it up at a game convention for, actually, I think it's a, I remember, I think I remember getting it for 40 bucks. Like, it was actually a decent price. I got it for 40 bucks, and, I mean, obviously, box GameCube go for way more than 40 bucks. But, uh, and it's, it's, uh, this, I, I actually did this little ding in Transport Home, but, like, the box is in pretty decent condition. It's, it's a pretty decent condition, uh, GameCube in box, so I definitely wanted to show this off as part of my GameCube collection. This, actually, is my Donkey Konga Bongo set. Um, so I'm pretty certain I have, yeah, so I have a copy of, uh, Donkey Konga in there, so, uh, I'm pretty certain I have... Donkey Kong, yeah, I actually have the game here on my shelf as well, but I have another copy in here. It even comes with, like, the instruction manual, and it comes with the bongos in there that's under that cardboard. Now, Donkey Kong isn't a game I really grew up with. Um, it's, uh, I, I mean, I've played it before, of course, but it's not really, like, um, like a staple of my childhood. Um, Donkey Kong, it's just a fun rhythm game where you're, you're hitting bongos and it's just a good time. Um, now, I got this a long time ago. Like, I think I got this, like, before I was a main GameCube collector. Because I started hardcore collecting for the GameCube in, like, 2013 is when I really started to try to beef up my GameCube collection. And, um, I think I got this beforehand. And I know, I, for some reason, I thought I also got Donkey Kong Jungle Beat in the box. I mean, I still have Jungle Beat, I still have the game itself, but I don't have the box. Maybe I destroyed it when I was a kid, but... But yeah, Donkey Kong, complete in the box, um, it's, it's definitely a very cool thing in my collection. The last of my boxed things is this copy of Mario Party 6, it's the big box edition. Now, Mario Party 6 is my favorite Mario Party of all time, I've even done a Zach Plays on it. I really want to do another one with some other friends, because 
This is, in my opinion, the best Mario Party. The best boards, the best mini games. But that's all personal opinion, of course. Um, I love this game. It's obviously the first Mario Party game I ever played, and the first GameCube game I ever played. And it's just so nostalgic to me, where it's like I like I this this just everything about this game is just perfect in my opinion. Um, I, I never really was too into the mic mini games because this uh, game came with the mic and all that. And I'm pretty certain that this actually has the mic in there um, with the game and all that. Yeah, the mic is in there and everything. Um, but yeah, um, this is just something. This is an item. I think I got this last year at Too Many Games. Not 2019, but 2018. I think I got this um, at Too Many Games. And, um, you know, I really I want, I really want to get the big box for Mario Party 7 as well. I saw it at Too Many Games this year, but to me, the price is just a little too high for me to pay. I think I, yeah, I ended up paying $60 for this, um, and that's why I wanted to pay for 7 but they asked for 75 but I think 6 was the more valuable of the two, so I didn't want to pay more than I paid for 6 Um... But, but yeah, Mario Party 7, hopefully I'll get one day, probably ne probably next year's too many games. Um, but nevertheless, Mario Party 6 in the big box, um, love this game, absolutely a gem on the GameCube, in my personal opinion. And it's, yeah, d again, one of my most nostalgic games of all time. I can't do a video talking about the GameCube without talking about Luigi's Mansion, of course I can't. Um, now, Mario Party 6 was the first game I pl ever played on the GameCube. But as for single player experiences, actually sitting down and really playing through a game, Luigi's Mansion is really my first deep delve into the GameCube. Like, this is the first game I, like, it's a single player experience that I sat through and I beat. And it was, to me, like, the game that made me love the GameCube for what it was. Because this, to me, was a very unique game. And still to this day is a unique game, to be honest. The realistic atmosphere that Luigi was in in Luigi's Mansion. The kind of creepiness of it, like, it, it, it made me, it, it sent shivers down my spine a few times as a kid. And it's a feeling that no Luigi's Mansion game since then has been able to fully do. And granted, this game doesn't really do that to me anymore because I'm grown up and because I've played it so many times. But, you know, this, there's no real moments in the second or third game that really have the atmosphere and the mood that this game has. And that's why this game, to me, is still the best version of Luigi's Mansion. I absolutely love this game. I've... I own like three copies of this game on the GameCube. I own the 3DS version. So obviously I love this game so much. And if it came out on the Switch, if they released a uh, like a $40 HD port, I would buy it in a heartbeat. Because this game just defined how amazing the GameCube was. And so many people say, oh, you know, it doesn't look that great to this day. You know, it, it, you know there are certain things about the game that don't look great. But then you gotta keep in mind, this was a launch title for the GameCube. This game came out, like, the same year as certain N64 games. Like, I think Banjo-Tooie came out in 2001. This game came out at the same time as N64 games, just coming off the N64. So, for me, this is, like, one of the best-looking GameCube games because of the fact of how early in the GameCube's lifespan it came out and how much the game managed to do. So, yeah, Luigi's Mansion, love this game, but you guys already know that. Next up here is Fire Emblem Path of Radiance. The main reason I'm pointing out this game is because this is my most valuable game in my GameCube collection. I'm pretty certain. Um, I'm pretty certain it's in the $100 to $150 range. Don't know where exactly it is, but I did not pay anywhere near that. I paid $5 at the flea market. Um, I, I think I did talk about this game in my video uh, last week, talking about like some of my best game finds, whatever. But this game... It was so great to find it for cheap, because I personally wouldn't have wanted to. I, I, this game's a good game, but I'm not a huge fan of Fire Emblem games, so I wouldn't have wanted to pay over $100 for this game. So to be able to say I, could, I found it at a flea market for 5 bucks, it, it's like one of the greatest finds of my channel. That's one thing about growing your own game collection. You have those finds that like are so good to where it's like... You, like it, 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 like, every single collector has their own stories of how they find certain games, and to me, this one is one of those ones I've really cherished. And that's kind of the same with these two games, Super Mario Sunshine and Super Smash Bros. Melee. These two games I played ever since I was a kid. Maybe not like Mario Party 6 and Luigi's Mansion when I was a kid, but I definitely did grow up a lot on these two games. And to me, the thing is, it's, like, it's also these, like with uh, Fire Emblem, is the way I found these. I found these, like, again, I mentioned, I talked about this in a video last week, but I found these in a garbage bag laying on the side of the road. 
Like, someone just threw out these games, and they are complete, they are in great condition, like, I think I had Smash Brothers Melee beforehand, but it was a, a, it was an upgrade for me, like, whoever had these games kept them in great condition, and, you know, these are just games that maybe not as much of childhood games as Luigi's Mansion and Mario Party 6, but they're still such great games. Melee might not be my favorite Smash Brothers game, I really like Ultimate quite a bit, but Melee is still such a great game to where it definitely earned second place. And then Mario Sunshine is just such a unique spin on the Mario 3D platformer to where it, it really earns my gratitude. I'm really torn between this one and Odyssey, but I think this one just might have the upper hand because of the personality that this game oozes. Now of course, Odyssey oozes a lot of personality, but there's something about uh, uh, Sunshine that felt so really original. Like, some of the worlds in Odyssey didn't really feel original, in my personal opinion, but in Sunshine they did. So, yeah, to me, these two games just ooze personality and greatness, and I love them to death. I think the Mario... What in the actual crap? Everything, every single time I record a video, something just falls for no apparent reason. Every single time. I don't... I don't know. I hope, I hope that didn't break. I don't think it did. But, okay, um, Mario Sports Games. Uh, I think the GameCube was the heyday of Mario Sports Games, because A, it had the most of them. It had tennis, golf, baseball, and soccer. We just had baseball and soccer. Um, 64 just had golf and tennis, and Wii U had just tennis, and it was horrible. So I think the GameCube definitely did the best when it came to the sports games. And I think, in my opinion, each one of these games has its own unique character and charm that it makes these the definitive games in the respective series. First of all, let's talk about Mario Power Tennis. The courts in this game are unmatched. The character select, well, maybe not unmatched with the character selection, but like I said, the courts. Oh my lord, the courts. They are so, so good. And based off of Mario games, Mario Sunshine, Luigi's Mansion, there are actually courts based on Mario games in this game, rather than Aces which just used generic New Super Mario Brothers kind of themes. And each character, there's a real reason to have a character that you chose because each one of them had a special power. For example, Luigi. Luigi, if the ball is far away from you and you earned your special shot, you were able to use the Poltergust to suck the ball back in. And it's just one of those cool things that every single character had their own unique thing. So that, along with golf, um, there's nothing really that stand out with golf, but I think it, the game just like looks really, really great, and I think this is like the last Mario Golf game on a home console. Like Mario Golf, after Toastal Tour, moved to the handheld games. And baseball, um, I think uh, Super Sluggers might have had the better courts, but baseball, in my opinion, I just like the traditional controls better than the motion controls, but that's just personally me. And Strikers was oozing of personality with uh, with next level games and, and their approach to making a Mario soccer game. So the Mario sports games are definitely ones that are gems on the GameCube. And all of them aren't too expensive to acquire either. I think the last main game I wanted to talk about here is WarioWare. To me, this is also one of my childhood games alongside of Mario Party 6 and Luigi's Mansion. I remember playing this game all the time, literally all the time with my friends. You know, we would always play Mario Party, I have so many fond memories with that, but other than Mario Party, like, I didn't play, like, we played Smash Brothers, um, but usually we played Brawl rather than Melee, because that was the new one at the time. Um, you know, we played, like, you know, Mario Kart, whatever. But WarioWare is the one that sticks out in my mind. I probably, on my GameCube memory card, still have all those stupid names we put into WarioWare, and just... All the childhood memories linked to this game. And this is another game I want to do a Zach plays of sometime. Next year when I go to too many games, I'm probably going to bring a few of these games along with me. So that I can do a Zach plays with some of my friends. I really, really want to do that. Because these games just are amazing and fun and just so over the top. And I think the game you just had a lot of that. Personality and charm coming out of its ears. And, like I said, I'm just covering a few of my choice games. Of course, a lot of you guys have your own choice ones, like Wind Waker, or Paper Mario, or Animal Crossing. That's the thing. The GameCube has such a wide library that every, like, every single person has different games that they have those emotional attachments to. Like, I don't really have that much with Animal Crossing. I have it a little bit with Paper Mario, but not as much as everyone else. So, like, everyone has their games from the GameCube that really stand out to them. And that's the beauty of the GameCube. 
the GameCube was a system that applied to that uh really like was what it really worked with all Nintendo fans. You had any single kind of game that you could have wanted on there. You had uh, Zelda games with so much different personalities, with like Wind Waker being the cartoony one and Twilight Princess being the darker one. You know, you had uh, Luigi's Mansion with its own unique thing. The Mario Party games, you know, 4 was definitely more akin to the N64 Mario Party, so lots of people really liked 4, but the 5, 6, and 7 ones offered way more, like, way more variety, and people really grown to those ones. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of variety there. So, the GameCube, in my opinion, is still the best Nintendo console to this day. The Switch is starting to come into a close second, in my personal opinion, but the Switch has still got a lot of fundamental flaws that it really needs to be addressed. Um, I think I've made videos about the Nintendo Switch's flaws in the past, so I don't know if I'm going to do a whole other video about it. But, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Actually, before I go, let me know down in the comments down below what GameCube games you guys personally grew up with or liked best. Or if it wasn't the GameCube, what systems did you guys grow up with? Because I know I do have a lot of people who are younger who might have grown up with a Wii or even a Wii U. I don't know. What did you guys grow up with? Let me know down in the comments down below, guys. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.